Okay, so I was sitting here looking at the Ocal Electronic Collimator, and this is essentially just a webcam in a metal housing with some proprietary software that comes with it. And I thought, that's a lot of money for what's essentially just a webcam. Surely, I can DIY that for cheaper. Okay, to start with, I've gotten this little thing. This is essentially just a, as you can see, a small PCB. There's a tiny camera module there in the center. And then that's pretty much it. There's a cable and it has USB at the other end. This is not a particularly good camera at all. It has relatively low resolution, has relatively poor performance, poor frame rate, but it has one very redeeming quality was it was cheap. Um, this was a fraction of the cost of what would be to buy like the finished product. And I figured with a bit of 3D printing and ingenuity, we could probably get this to work. But let's start with just trying to plug this in to a computer. Well, there we go, look at that. Camera module. It's definitely working here. Okay, cool. So now that we know that this is working, it is time to 3D print an enclosure for this. Okay, here is my 3D printed housing for this. Um, oh, that's a noise. Uh, it comes in two parts, as you can see here. And um, the bottom of it here has small pegs. I'm not sure if those are easily visible, but those are designed to go into the hole for uh, holes in the corner of the PCB to keep that thing centered for the make sure the camera stays centered. Then there's this recess. This is for all the surface mount components that we see here. The four posts out here in the corner um, are intended to be that I'm going to be putting heat inserts into them here, 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 here. And then you have the lid, um, which again have holes that goes over these so that they slide down over this entire thing. There's also a recess in here. And these corners here are going to clamp down on the PCB so that's going to be clamped in place because they didn't have screws that actually fit. And then they're going to slide over and I can put four screws in in the corners here. And there's a cut out there for the cable so I can be able to slide this together, something like, like this. And then put four screws in and then this thing should be ready to go. Okay, now let's get this thing in here. Not scratching the table too much. Get that open. And then here we have it. Finished, assembled. Get that out there. Put that in there. I'm actually quite excited for, excited for this. Okay. Now, as this really is a DIY project, I've actually also been writing my own collimation software for this camera. A um, <laughs> bit more than a weekend project now, but I, and I know there are free software like SharpCap and stuff that you can probably use this, that can do this, that's free. But I thought with the DIY nature of the project, I wanted to write my own software for driving this camera. Moment of truth. Hey, there it is, look at that. <laughs> Okay, we have definitely a view down the tube. Now let's see if the... Okay, so this camera doesn't support in-camera zoom, but I should be able to just... I need to be able to also off-center this, I can see. But okay. Now what we are seeing here is that's the edge of the, um, of the primary mirror. What we can already see now is we can see one clip there but I can't see any clips here. What, what else does actually work here? Does the gain? Gain definitely works. So the first thing I already noticed is I need to be able to recenter this. So let's just move this out a bit. Okay. I think that ring that we see here, very faint, is the edge of the... Um, actually, if I do this, it's probably clearer. I think that ring we see there is the... That's the edge of the secondary mirror. So this edge here is the secondary. Actually, let me just, I have, I have tools so we can do this. Because we can do like crosshairs here. Let's just get some of these out of the way. Overexposed this by a lot. So 
So now we can clearly see, you can actually see the screws there inside the, um, the edge of the draw tube. Right there, that's pretty good. So now that outer ring matches the edge of the, um, of the draw tube. So if you now pull the, uh, the exposure back a bit, so we can actually see the mirror again. Now we can see this is not perfect. There. Now this second ring here needs to now be centered on the um, on the main mirror, which you can see down here, which is approximately at now. So I'm going to just try to begin slowly adjusting this to see if I can get the main mirror to be at the center of that ring. Okay, I think there is pretty good for the second ring. We make the second ring a little smaller. That now looks like the primary mirror is now perfectly centered compared to that. Okay, so next up you can see the black circle here in the middle, that's the secondary mirror on the way back. So if we take this circle here and try to expand that outwards to see if that fits, it fits pretty well I think with the secondary. Maybe that's a little bit off, we can see a bit of light out here on this side. We can't see over here, so I'm gonna turn this around and try to do some adjustments. Okay, he's making some fine adjustments here. There, that looks pretty good if we take that third ring and make that a tad smaller. Maybe it's a bit now on the lower left now, a bit too much down there. Something like that I think is pretty good. Okay, should I align it up with the sec edge of the secondary mirror? I don't think I should. Okay, but regardless of whether I'm actually using this right, it's clearly working and is this as good as the commercial product? Probably not. I'm sure that if you go and buy the uh, the commercial, it's probably going to be a lot better. But if you're on a budget and you have a 3D printer, this is a very, very viable way to go. And as I said, yes, I wrote my own software for this because I thought it was fun. You can use, I think SharpCab have similar features where you can use that instead. So there are free software that does this too. Um, otherwise, get a hold of me and you can get the Python files for this if, you, uh, if you're interested. If you found this video interesting or fun, then there's a number of things you can do to help me out. You can just go and click the like button, or if you really like, you can click the, click the subscribe button. You can also go and check out my book on deepspacebooks.com. This is a, an, like a field guide, a handbook for astrophotographers to take with you out in the field with loads of useful graphs and tables and stuff where you can fill out your own information. So you have all that information at hand when you're out there in the black. Check everything out in the description below. That sits at a 45 degree angle that reflects the light down the focusing tube. In order to get the best possible image, you need to make sure that you... Hmm, okay. Now the question is, of course, what is it that's out of alignment? I'm trying to... Oh, this is impossible. Try to focus on the donut.